good day, all of my friends. It's good to see you once again, or maybe you don't see me yet, but you see me now. It's Marty G with today's talk, and I'm glad to have you back. And I have a brand new friend to join me today. I have Anya Khan. Anya, how are you today? I'm excellent. How are you? I am so happy to be working with you on a weekend. Although I don't really know when everybody's going to see this. I just know you and I are putting the show together on a weekend. So we're That's working right. on the weekend. <laughs> but I'm so glad to have you with me. Thanks for joining. You, I'm glad to be here. Now, many of you don't know, actually none of you know, um, Anya and I are, are like long lost friends that just became friends just recently. <laughs> <laughs> Is that is that kind of accurate? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the universe put us together. Um, I was pouting because I had to wait a long, long time to do a presentation at, at a uh, Springfield uh, greeters presentation. And she just happened to just show up that day. And it was like crazy. And then she sent me a note saying, hey, let's do a one to one. We did a one to one. And then like that one to one went on for like five days. And like we have all <laughs> these like parallel interests and stuff. I'm like, I, oh, my God you've got to be on my show. So thank <laughs> you for being on my show. I totally appreciate it. But I want to know more about you so I can introduce you to like the world starting with Lane, Lane County proper. So who are you with? Tell me about Rise Visible. Sure. So Rise Visible is a full service digital marketing agency. We do all the things, which means we do SEO, we do websites, web development or design. We do digital marketing, email marketing. We build e-learning portals. We build um, e-commerce websites. We do pretty much anything that you can think of that would support your digital needs, as well as we do consulting. So we work with our clients differently. Like we'll work with somebody who might be a startup and kind of help them get their feet on the ground and get going with branding, because that's one of our other things we do, branding and brand development. And then we might work with very established companies that are looking for marketing strategy. And then we come in and we consult with them and figure out what to do. And, and that's kind of kind of what we do. I've been doing this since on some in some capacity since 1998. So now I'm giving you my age. Oh, look. <laughs> you know, I, I was afraid you're gonna say that, but look, I'm not gonna. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I've been doing like the branding marketing thing a lot longer. I mean, look, I've been back in the days. Like I tell people, it's so funny because uh, we, we, we'll talk reach and frequency between the two of us at some point in time, and at the, Back in the day, we used to talk about media mix and, you know, the whole mindset of where you're going to put your message. And back in the day, it was so simple. Print, TV, radio. That's all you had to do. There were three things to do. That's all you had to think about. That's how old I am, okay? I am really, I'm a dinosaur. So now it's like, uh, gosh, um, hmm, TV, well, maybe not so much. Uh, uh, internet, uh, you know, there's everything, right? So having a professional like yourself is really, really handy. And I heard a rumor somewhere, a little bird told me, you guys just want to read an award of some sort? I want to do what? You just won an award or something, didn't you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So um, there's an amazing website called Clutch. And okay. it's a review website for people in the tech industry. And they rank digital agencies. And it's, it's a big review platform because it's not like Google where you can just go, hey, you know, we work together. Can you go give me a review? They actually like vet people and make them write things and question them. And it takes somebody like 30 minutes to actually give you a review. So once that review's there, it really creates, a, you know, domain authority for your website. It creates some type of, you know, it's just valid. Oh, let me say that again. <laughs> Um, it creates domain authority for your website, as well as it just shows that, you know, you're doing a good job. And so we ranked as top female digital agencies for 2022, as well as we ranked, you actually can find it if you want to help me out, <laughs> go sure. to, uh, go to press and media. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. And that's, there's the, there's the list right there of the oh, awards right there. we got. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. top. Top 80 women-owned content marketing agencies in 2022, the manifest, and then, you know, the three for those, and then expertise 
One of the ones I really love hearing about, though, is, you know, being in the top women owned digital agencies of 2022. I mean, I love them all. Like, I'm honored right. and like so thankful. It's just great. So, well, that's, you know, and I, and I think that's fantastic because literally, and I, and, you know, I always look when I see the little dude down here that tells me, okay, accessibility is an important thing for you. Yes. Because literally having more women in tech that are already mm -hmm. thinking about accessibility. I mean, you're, you're, you're starting to check boxes, which people don't think about when they're getting into the digital space at all. I mean, they just kind of, people just throw things together and kind of get out there. And then they think about their web presence as that's just someplace I need to be. Well, there's a lot more boxes to check. So to know that you're an expert that's already been doing this and been doing it for a long time. I'm just happy to have you here in the market already doing this. So I'm really glad that you're doing this and that you're award-winning and you're kind of easy to talk to, which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like accessibility, you know, it's, it's where it's one of the main things that you and I really connect on is I'm a disabled woman owned business. And it's something that I really didn't talk about before. I really just kind of kept it. I'm already a woman in tech, which is challenging to begin with, but then throw having a disability on there, numerous disabilities. Right. And it's, it felt like, oh, I shouldn't be sharing that. But just this year, I decided that that was going to change. I got a diagnosis last year um, after 20 years, um, spent a lot of my time bedridden at one point on a feeding tube. So it, it was very life changing to finally have a solid diagnosis and treatment. And now I'm able to really work on scaling over this last year, which has been great. But the, the, important part for me was really looking at that accessibility for our website, accessibility for disabled business owners. I hover over the photo, go down and hover over. Everybody, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I love it. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, we just did that recently. Deborah's got to get hers to me. The okay. two dogs have them. I'm waiting on the other two. So, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's so, great. But it's really important. I uh, I went ahead and I applied for certification through DOBE, which is uh, Certified Disabled Business Owners, uh, for cert to certify uh, disabled business owners. I'm also certified under Clutch as a disabled business owner as well as a female owned. Uh, business owner. So nice. these are important things for us to talk about because one of the things with entrepreneurship and being self-employed, it's very common for people with disabilities to be in that realm because right. we can't work for normal people. You know, it's difficult for me. Like I can't be responsible and know that I can show up for you and right. I can't deal with that. So it's been paramount for me to control my own schedule and then try to find ways in the community to just step out because I have been lucky to be very successful and why not stand there and go like, this is who I am. This is, this is what I do. And you can do it too. You know, you can do what you want to do, no matter what kind of challenges come in your way. And in Oregon, there wasn't a lot of support for people with disabilities in the right. business world. So I was looking for different things online for grants and things like that, not necessarily for myself, but resources for other people. And then that prompted me to start the Oregon, um, the Oregon Disabled Business Owners Association, which is just a directory of self-identified disabled business owners. And then also we have a bunch of resources on that site. So places where people could get grants because there's spotty stuff. There's like a little bit up in Portland. There's a little bit here and a little bit there. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to put that together for people. And it's new. So if you go there, I'm like the only person on it. Okay, so, so I won't go there. I was about to go there. I'm like, no, 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 go area. there. Go there. The site's great. It's just, you know, it started like two weeks ago and okay. I haven't really done a lot of outreach. So if you are a self-identified disabled business owner and what disabled means according to, you know, ADA mm -hmm. is something that directly impacts your ability to function in normal life. And that can be an illness that can, that can be, there's so many different things. What's so, the website called again? 
It's uh it's uh O D B O A dot com. O D O O D B O A. Odd Boa. <laughs> That's what it comes out to. O D B O A dot com. And it's free. We're working with a couple of different organizations right now to see if we can get grants so that it we can help ourselves keep our website going, you know, and I'm not the one just footing the bill here. Right. Okay. So well, we talked about this because why I got so really into and heavy into the, the, uh, the disability space. And I, I try to use the, 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 the terminology, uh, synonymously is ad ad adaptability and disability is because mm -hmm. literally I've, I've lived my whole life as a minority. Yeah. Look at me. I'm a big black guy. Well, I haven't been a big black guy. I'm a little black guy. Well, really? I didn't yeah. notice. True, I know, right? But once I learned how large the disability community is across the country, they are the largest minority group in the country. But yes. every, day, every day, they have to deal with adaptability. They Absolutely. have to find another way to adapt to the world around them. Mm -hmm. And getting people to understand that it's not something that, oh boy, well, we have to go and do this to do this. It's like, no, it's something that we should just be doing. I mean, literally, everybody should have equal access, accessibility, everything. Everybody should have the, the the, the ease of access, this one group of folks shouldn't have to spend their whole life mm -hmm. learning to adapt to everything that they need to do because the rest of us just, oh, we didn't think about that. Right. I mean, no, that's, <laughs> that's, what, that's what it really comes down to. It's like, oh, we forgot. And there's a lot of ways to make it happen that it can be done. It's not like it's impossible. There's simple ways to do it. It's just trying to get people to wake up and say, oh, well, show me how. It's important. So organizations mm -hmm. like this, like you're, you've started, you know, what you've got your business founded on, you know, jokers like me that are trying to go to businesses and go, wake up. It's not that hard. Um, it, it, takes a, it takes a village, right? <laughs> yeah, it does. And you are right. Like there's a big, there's a lot of talk right now about DEI. We have this conversation right now about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And one of, like you said, one of the biggest groups of people are those that are disabled. And there's not a lot of people talking about that. There was actually an article that came out, I think it's even on this list uh, recently, where it's like, well, we need to talk about disability when we're talking about this right like this is an important thing so we have like programs up here um we have articles that we found were you know beneficial for people you know certifications i'm trying to see i think let's see support disability diversity and there it is diversity includes disability oregon business and that was a, a great article so and the thing is is I think the most challenging thing is, is that people with disabilities aren't always easy to spot. If right. I walk into a room, no one's going to pin me for a disabled girl. Like they're not going to be like, oh yeah, she's challenged, you know? Right, right. But that's the thing is disability isn't always visible and people shouldn't have to talk about it if they don't want then to. They shouldn't have to. Exactly. You know, if you don't want to disclose it, you shouldn't have to disclose it. But that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be options. Exactly. And recently I was in a marketing group and they actually invited me. They meet in person and they invited me via Zoom. And I was the only Zoom person there. <laughs> and they went ahead and, and they accommodated me. And at the end, I really wanted to join the group. And, and I said, you know, I know that, you know, this might be a little difficult to like zoom me in. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Like, that's fine. Like I'm used to being excluded. <laughs> you know, I, I live in the virtual world. That's why zoom has been great for me. Um, because I have been isolated way before COVID ever happened. I was wearing masks way before COVID ever happened. So now that we have a lot more virtual opportunities, events and things like that, my world has opened up for me, which is part of the reason why I've, I've gained some ground in things. But just having somebody say, 
hey, let's zoom you in. I was like ready to cry. I'm like, you would zoom me in. I'm the only person and you're going to take the time to zoom me in. Yeah. And when they did and the thing was over, I knew it was a little bit of a challenge. And like I said, I said, well, you know, if it doesn't work out, I understand. And they were like, we're going to talk to everybody about it. We'll get back to you. And then they got back to me and said, we're going to try to work with you on that. And I literally was like, That's this is amazing, amazing, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I want to be a part of things too, but I can't go into restaurants. I can't go to certain types of networking things. Like I don't have the ability to, to be there. And it's extremely isolating for me, you right. know? But I also don't expect people to bend over backwards either because people with disabilities, which I'm sure you understand, have learned to adapt. We've okay. learned to adapt and move and shake and grow. And that's just what we've done. So even if we're not included, we'll figure out other ways to do what we need to do. We just would love it if people would help us out every once yeah, in a just while. Everyone, just give, give us, us a, hand. a break, right? Just kind of you know? I mean, literally, because I tell people, my, my, and I found this out again, working in the space that I work in, ADHD is on the disability scale. Did it recognize that. And I've had it all my life. And there are times in places, in spaces where it's too much for me because there's too much going on, but I have to adapt to the situation. In the digital world, I, I, there's some places I can't go because there's too much going on on the website. There's too much because these people don't recognize that there's too much for someone like me. Mm -hmm. So literally being able to understand from someone who is that way, mm -hmm. it's that whole point of holding hands across adaptability how yeah. do we keep getting that message going out? It's because we need to have voices that are being able to communicate this to people. It's mm -hmm. like I tell people, um, the conversations aren't hard. It, 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 they're only, oh wait, no, it's not. I say it's only as hard if you make it hard. It's like when they, people say, well, it's, that's really weird. It's only weird if you make it weird. It's only hard if you make it hard. And the more we talk, the more we interact, the more we intersect, the easier it gets. There's more people out there that are willing to do these things. I mean, I came across you all of a sudden. I'm like, oh my God, where have you been? I mean, I, uh, you're like, this is who I've been looking for. Someone that understands what I'm trying to do. And they're already doing it at a higher level than I could even imagine. Super. So I think it's just a matter of just continuing to talk it out. So yeah. Aside from doing this on your own, I mean, what's your inspiration? I mean, what, what drives you every day to do this? Well, I think really, I mean, even the whole business model that I have with Rise Visible is kind of the same thing. It's being out in the, in the average world when I was younger, you know, 24 plus years ago, and then everything just shutting down for me with an illness. I wanted to be a therapist. That was my goal, but I lost my ability to do that and function. And I had to try to find a way to build community. I had to find a way to create connection. I had to find a way to make an income, right? And so the digital space was there for me in that time. And that was huge for me to have that as access. And now as things have progressed, I've kind of told people over the last numerous, you know, two decades of my life, I've been in survival mode, right? Like I paid my bills and I've done the thing and I love what I do and I have great clients. But in the recent you know, over the last two years, these shifts with my health and, and these diagnoses have shifted my ability to kind of stand in a stronger space on top of the fact that COVID has been so destabilizing for all my normal friends, all my able body friends, no. right? My yeah. able body friends, people that work normal jobs, people that have kids that go to school that live within these normal, I mean, I know we're not, I know everybody has things and not everybody's normal, but I mean, like in general, the general understanding of we go through life, we have these habits, there's nothing that's greatly disturbing our world. We're taking our kids to school, we're doing things, sure, you know, maybe challenging things happen, but not like epic things. And then right. with the whole thing with COVID, everything shifted. Doesn't matter what you politically believe. Nope. Does it matter if you believe COVID's real or not? Does it doesn't matter. matter. The, the world has shifted whether or not you like it or not. Got to recognize and, that. Yeah, I agree. And, and everybody's had to find a way to adapt whatever side or thoughts they have. And us in the disability world are going like, 
we've been here. We've been here. <laughs> we're like, we've been here. Like, welcome day. to our world. <laughs> you know? Really? Like, hello. For us. <laughs> yeah. Right. I remember going, I remember when my partner started to have to wear a mask. And, uh, you know, like I said, I've been wearing it for years. And he's like, I'm dying. And I'm like, why do you think I needed to leave a place sometimes when I'm dying? Because, you know, these things. But with that being said, it's given me a, a, a bit of strength because I have done this. I've already gone through the grief process of being a disabled person and being isolated. I've already worked through figuring out how to navigate. So when I have had to navigate in COVID, it's not a lot different. So for me, running the business that I do, um, you know, starting that organization and the other project that I do as well is all been based on the fact that I feel pretty stable in this space. So I might as well go out and try to help other people, like, for instance, Saturday market people, a lot of them wanted to turn their stuff into e-commerce sites because they didn't have the same ability to take care of themselves because that was their their financial backing or other companies, larger companies that I've worked for that have had to change everything about the way they function, the way they do meetings, the way they work with their clients. And so that digital space had to be adapted. So yeah. I've been, I felt lucky because I feel like I, I can help here yeah. and that's great. Right. Yeah. So yeah. definitely. Well, I tell you, it's, it's great to have, um, such a relatable professional, um, in a space where I thought that I'm speaking a foreign language. I mean, literally, because sometimes I walk into these rooms and I, I talk about this stuff and I feel like I literally, I'm an alien from another planet. <laughs> literally, it's like- That's okay. I feel like an alien all the time anyway. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with aliens. Don't get me wrong. Okay, DEI applies to aliens too. Okay, so you're coming on another planet. That's on. right. We'll take you too. Um, so- I, I just, I mean, literally we could talk forever, but I, I just want to make sure that uh, if there's a way that people can get a hold of you um, and what kind of client, I mean, that's literally what I come down to. Like, what kind of clients are, are, are you looking for? If we can help you, my viewers, me, who, who can we send your direction? How can we best help you? Sure. So we work with all small businesses. So if you're a startup and you're needing help or you're mid-level and you're kind of like in your marketing, you're like, ah, we need to level up. We're just kind of stale and we need, we need a little oomph or working with higher level, you know, companies that are just like, okay, we just want to shift our marketing or we need a different type of strategy or we want to rebrand ourselves because we've shifted ourselves. A lot of businesses have done a lot of shifting through COVID. What you know their names are or what their target market is has been shifting. So we help people do that. But we work with all types of small businesses from an artist up to corporate. So we, we love that. And actually types of businesses are all, which helps my ADHD <laughs> because I love to learn about you. I yeah. love to learn about my clients. And if I just worked with all realtors, I'd be bored out of my mind. Right. So I work with, I work with an HR company. I work with a monument company out in Vermont. So all of these things, it's just, I love to learn about people's business and create strategies and ideas to help them specifically, you know, move in their market the way they want to and rise up and mm -hmm. be visible. So that would be a great name for a business. Yeah, oh, I know. Rise right? visible. Oh my gosh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so quick sometimes. Okay. So what's the best way to get a hold of you? Sure. So you can find us on risevisible.com. We also, if you like search us out there, we're on all social media platforms. We have a podcast called Rise Above Be Visible, where we provide a ton of resources for our clients and people that aren't our clients yet. So if you're looking for stuff and you want to learn and we have that available, and then I'm an artist, you can find me at my name out there in the the land of the internet and very accomplished thing. artist that's a whole nother show i <laughs> dude i tell you um folks i hate to cut her off but man i did a little stalking on her on, on the old, old google and i was like what the holy freak what wow so sorry go ahead 
<laughs> you go ahead, tell them how to find your art. I'll shut up now. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just aniacon.com. You can find all of the art and photography and publishing that I've done. And then we run another website called Create for Healing. And that's educational, uh, artsy stuff. And then that mixes with loss and grief and narcissistic abuse and taking creativity and putting it together to kind of help you walk through those challenging times. So fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. That's, so, uh, that's what I do. And that's where I'm at. Anything, I'm all over. You put my name and you'll find me. Right. Just <laughs> Come Google. find Google me somewhere. Me. Come me. say hello. <laughs> <laughs> anything you want to share before we go? No, just anybody that's out there that's going through a challenging time. I think that just keep on swimming, keep on going, you know, keep on staying on the world is a tough tough place right now for everybody and we need to stick together we need to be compassionate we need to be diplomatic we need to try to work together that's how we make the world a better place fantastic well thank you very much and <clears throat> i do appreciate you giving me this time and i'm looking forward to doing more work with you matter of fact all the things you're talking about, i'm like going hmm person she's looking for that all sounds like me hmm. <laughs> So <laughs> but before you go, I do have to tell you, there is a part of this I'm going to hit you with. It's called, it's a, I never really prepare people for it, but it's. Uh, I don't like to be prepared. I'm good, like, good. I don't No, I yeah. never read. I never read. Like when I go on podcasts, they're like, here's, here's the list of questions. I won't read them. Good. Good. I don't like scripts. Th this is, this is the part of my show. I call it. Let's get real. Where I give 3,000 questions to you. I'm just kidding. Oh. I actually pulled out of my research on you, random. I went into my book and got three questions out of my book of 3,000. I'm going to ask you three out of 3,000. Okay. okay. All right. So question number one, who would you want as your partner on Dancing with the Stars? Oh, geez. Oh, um, Christopher Walken. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I know why you're talking, you're talking about that video, aren't you? What yes. Oh my God. What is that? Yes. Song? Oh, uh, folks, I can't think of what the song is, but if you just Google Christopher Walken dance, you will never look at him the same. It is the best video ever. I can't think of the name of the it song, is. but I love it. I think it's Fat Boy Slim that did the song. Yes. Is it? Yes. I can't think of the name though, but you just, you'll find it. It's yeah. like Christopher you know. Walken dance. It is the best, one of the yes. best videos ever. Okay. Question number two. If you were entering the world of Star Wars, would you be a Jedi or a Sith Lord? Ooh. Um, I want to be a Sith Lord. But according to everybody in my life, I'm a Jedi. Mm. So I want to be naughty, but I don't really have it in me. <laughs> uh, you're, you're, I'm kind of the same way, but you know, just once, I just want to be a bad guy. That's oh, right. I'm like, I just want to be naughty. I want to go in there and just break stuff. <laughs> right? I just don't have it in me, but I like wanna. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I feel bad. Okay, and the last question. What's the longest movie you ever watched? Oh, geez, the longest remember? movie I've ever watched. That's a good question. Oh, um, I don't know. Shawshank's pretty long. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I feel like there's ones that are longer, but I can't think right now. But I I'm just going to go with Shawshank because it's one of my favorite movies anyway. And it is a long story. And if you've never seen that, Oh my, my goodness, you're missing like one of the most life. epic movies that's ever made. And if Isn't you like Morgan life? Freeman, yeah, I mean, please, please. <laughs> like it's a good movie. It's a good movie, and I, and that's, all, that's again talking about my age and where I am at this stage of my life. It's like I'm always in all these like committee meetings and all these different things with all these like public people, like from public service and stuff. And I'm sitting around waiting for the old public, you know, older black statesman morgan freeman type person to speak up in these meetings and then i realize oh it's me i guess i'm that guy now <laughs> so i end up being the morgan freeman type guy but unfortunately i'm more like a cross between morgan freeman and ice cube so it's kind of like it's kind i of think weird, that works it's a weird hybrid 
<laughs> I think that works. I think I'm a cross between Tigger and Mr. Peabody. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> well, I definitely appreciate you being on. Uh, folks, definitely reach out. I'll have contact information for Anya in the, 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 uh, the comments below. And definitely reach out for any kind of information. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show, definitely those com those uh, that information will be in the comments as well. But thank you for being on. I definitely am glad having you. It was great to chat with you. You too. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You bet. We'll talk to you soon. She picture perfect, so I told him I'm a flicker. Bill, I'm in a move for a change Straight to the stage, they love me. love me. I understand they hungry, but please don't hate, that's ugly. I've been sliding, shaking, moving. I've been popping in my city. Shorty say she love the way we do it, do it with me. I be too turned up to ever give a f. I ain't come to argue, let